G'day ladies and gents and welcome to War Thunder with Mags and today we've got War Thunder with a slight difference. As I promised a while ago, this is the Oculus Rift. We're taking a quick look at how War Thunder works with the OR as the OR has been given a release date of March this year for the production model. Now this isn't the actual release version of the Oculus Rift, this is the development kit 2. The development kit 2 was released uh, about a year ago, it's preliminary tech. It works the same way as the release version will, but it was released for testing purposes and so that developers had something to work with so that they could build support for the Oculus Rift within their games. Now, originally I was going to do this using a normal replay of my flight and just show this as a secondary window, what you're seeing on screen now, the actual raw footage from the Oculus Rift. I've been requested not to do that. The reason is there is something that you guys can do without getting an Oculus Rift to view this video to see how the tech works. It's called Google Cardboard. It should be on screen right now if I've edited this correctly. Now, Google Cardboard is literally a cardboard box that you fold up and you slot a high-resolution phone, smartphone, into. You then look through the holes and it gives you the feeling of what, are, uh, uh, what the Oculus Rift and other VR devices will be capable of doing without actually having to go the money of purchasing one yourself. You can also, there are instructions online on how to make one of your own, but I'll let you guys find those ones if you're unable to get access to Google Cardboard for these videos themselves. So, we'll take a quick look around the cockpit for starters and show how it works. Now, War Thunder has a couple of small problems when it comes to the Oculus Rift. It doesn't, it doesn't currently do on-screen overlays particularly well. So there are no target markers, there's no HUD, you can't view the map, you can't view the team scores while you're using the Oculus Rift. And this is a, a slight problem, as the development kit 2 doesn't have a high enough resolution for you to be able to spot dots at a distance. In fact, you can't actually see the dots that represent aircraft outside of about 1.5 kilometers. So the Oculus Rift is not currently capable of doing combat in War Thunder, which is unfortunate. I really wanted to show you some combat. But overall, the technology does work. Now, there may be some choppiness in the recording. It's because I render my videos at 30 FPS. The Oculus Rift operates at around 70 FPS, preferably 90 if you can do it. So it does require a bit of hardware to get it to work. I believe the minimum system requirements are a GTX 970, uh, 16 gig of RAM, and I think it wants an i5 in the CPU department. I actually meet all the system requirements except CPU on my behalf. Uh, I have only got a hex core 6300 AMD, but I've managed to brute force the frame rate with my GDX 980, so I'm still getting the required frame rate on my end. But if there's any choppiness, don't worry, it's not an OR thing. It is just you're watching a YouTube video, not, a live, not live footage from the Oculus Rift itself. So... How does this work differently to Track IR? Well, Track IR has a camera that sits on top of your monitor, it projects an infrared beam, and it tracks three markers on either a spring steel headpiece or, if you've got a pro clip, a little device that attaches to the side of your headphones to track movement. And it uses an accelerator. So, because those sensors always need to be pointed at the camera, it's set up so if you turn your head a little bit, the camera will turn a large amount. With the Oculus Rift, that's not the case. There is a camera, it's much larger, that sits on top of your monitor. However, it tracks the head movement of the rift itself. So, to look around, everything is 1-1. One, one. If I want to look behind, I simply turn my head, and I've bumped the microphone there because I can't see it, um, I simply turn my head in order to be able to look wherever it is that I want to look in full motion. Now I can lean forward to look at the inside of the cockpit and lean back. This gives you a sense of immersion that I haven't seen anywhere else before. Now, I've left the pilot's body active here. I actually don't mind having the pilot's body in. It sits in about the position that I would sit. One thing I have noticed with the Oculus Rift in War Thunder, and I'll lean it out because people will notice it in the comments section, is I'm constantly sitting to the right. That's not a camera calibration issue. It appears to be something with War Thunder. It doesn't matter where I sit. If I sit dead center to the camera, I'm always sitting slightly right in the game. But it's simple enough because you just lean into the position that you want to sit in, in order to be able to view. So we'll fire up the engine here. Now I'm flying the Tempest B, 1BL here as a flyer. This is just on the test map and you'll be amazed at how differently the test map looks through the Oculus Rift. So it's in position, begin the throttle up, flaps to takeoff. off. 
throttles to maximum and whip. Just lean out the side so I can check the runway a little bit here. Little bit of nose down. A little bit of rudder tweakage here. I'm drifting slightly. And pull back. Flaps and landing gear retracted. Yep. I'm actually sitting back a little bit too far here. The body is, as you can see, rendered right underneath the camera, which is great for positioning, but it means if you lean back a little bit too far, whoa, better push the nose down before I stall, and you will uh, you'll clip through the body. So this is the British test map. And as you can see, things look slightly different. It's hard to describe how this looks. I hope some of you can get access to something like Google Cardboard or make one of your own to truly get a feeling of how this looks. But this is easily the king of immersion at the moment. There's a couple of track IR, or track IR, a couple of uh, virtual reality systems that are currently in development. Sony has the Morpheus working, but it looks like Oculus Rift was the first to start development again from the 90s VR and it looks like they're going to be the first to the retail outlets that you would purchase them from. We'll go over and have a look at the ships over here. So, lean a little bit so I can check my six. Of course there's no other planes on the test map, but it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to keep the motion slow here for you. I know it's going to clip on the uh, the, the re-render as it is. Now, controlling the plane in the Oculus Rift, it's incredible how easy it is. Because you have... You, you have a really good perspective on exactly where everything on your plane is in comparison to you. Your ability to fly is... phenomenal. Pop this up, go to WEP. And we'll throttle down, we'll go here, stall it over the water. Throttle back, and we'll bring it in fast past the carrier. Throttles to max. And there she is. So unfortunately in War Thunder at the moment this is all you can do, but it does show exactly how the technology will work. This is, well I don't know if it'll be the be all and end all for sim pilots. The Oculus Rift does mean you'll be doing a lot more head motions in order to look around while you're flying. You'll be focusing heavily, trying to track targets, it'll be a lot more difficult than it is with Track IR where a small head movement will allow you to keep tight eyes on the prize at all times. However, for those looking for an immersive and realistic experience flying an aircraft, this is honestly the only way to go. Even in its preliminary state, which is where it is here with the development kit too, where the resolution is actually low enough that I can't clearly read the gauges that are right in front of me at the moment. I can see the large needles and I know what everything on the gauges is doing because I know the gauges in this aircraft, but I can't actually read the individual numbers. It's still fantastic to fly. The amount of immersion and realism in actually using this is just incredible. There's, there's no other way to describe it. Once the release version comes out, it will have a resolution that is probably higher than most of your own monitors. I think at the moment the development kit 2 is only using a single screen. I believe the re release version, I could be wrong here, is actually going to be using two. And they're both 4K or above on the screen quality. I actually don't have the resolutions here. And obviously I couldn't see them anyway. But uh, I've seen the screenshots and I have read the specs in the past and it looks phenomenal. I'm hoping that Gaijin will do updates on the technology as we really get to, uh, closer to release, getting it working properly. I know that they did say that they wanted the Oculus Rift to be fully operational by the time of release, so fingers crossed it'll get some updates and I'll be able to show you some combat. Now you'll notice from the gun sight, things are not quite perfectly rounded 
Um, it's, a, it's an issue with the resolution at the moment. The gun side is stretched rather than being a nice circle. It's more of an oval. But it still works. It still shows, still shows your positions. So, the menu with the Oculus Rift is actually quite different. As you can see, they're sort of a square. It's, it may be hard to see for those of you who don't have the Google Cardboard set up, but the, the screen that you would normally see is projected and slightly tinted onto the background. Now, you can't rotate the aircraft in Oculus Rift. They just sit in whatever position that they're currently available in. However, to look around the menus, you'll see that there's a, like you can see the black bar for the top, your two battle buttons, your vehicle info is in the upper left. If you look down below, you can see all your aircraft and your crew slots. What's interesting about the way it's set up is you can actually turn right away from the main menu screen and completely look around. And this is, oh, and I've hit the microphone again, and this is just a projection. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you may not be able to see it, but the FPS for the game, which is incredibly low on the menus for some reason, is displayed in the bottom left-hand corner here where it traditionally would, and you'll see the cursor disappears off the screen as I pull it away. So your normal screen interface is sitting there right in front of you, but you have the camera positioned in a way that it's just a projection rather than it being your entire control interface. This is something that developers have been working with ever since the OR was announced and they first got access to the DK1, exactly how to handle menu systems in the Oculus Rift. And this seems to be the trick that most developers have gone for, putting the, the, uh, the menu in a projection within the 3D environment, as it's the easiest way to interface with it. Even the Oculus Rift's own calibration tools use exactly the same thing. Actually, I've changed my mind on that one. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how the menus actually work in this environment. So we'll go to the menu bar, go to custom battles, we've got our list of custom battles here, create session exactly as it was, but you see you've got to look around a lot more for what you're after. Now maps, we'll go to an arcade map, everybody's played arcade at least once, what have we got here? Kursk, no, Operations, uh, Mazdoc, Wake Island, no, nope, 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 New Guinea, nope, not what I'm after. Ground Strike. Pacific Hidden Base. I love this map. It is a really good looking map. Alright, we'll go start. And I'm not even going to look at the keyboard. We'll just punch in a random password. Join in progress. We want no. Include bots, yes. Otherwise we'll get kicked out and we'll go apply. Game session creates. And here's your menu. Exactly the same as you would expect it to be in the normal version of the game without the Oculus Rift. Go ready, yep, through P38K, and we'll go start. And joining game session, and then you go through to your, your menu, and everything is exactly the same. It's still the projection. You just gotta turn your head to look around. This is the only interface that you're actually able to see. Once this, you click the buttons here, you lose all of your interface options and you're unable to bring them back. So hopefully they'll have that fixed soon. So we go to battle. And I left my joystick over there. There we go. Everything's in slightly the wrong position for me. Now it's given me a third person camera. Now obviously I can turn my head and use it, but I'm not going to. We're going to go, there we go, that's what I'm after, in the cockpit of the P38K. All right, sit forward a little bit this time. Try and get that pilot out of the way. Oh, we got some cloud cover here. Great. It's going to be fun. And there she is, Pacific Hidden Base, looking quite a bit different than the last time you might have seen her. We'll put the K down through the mountains and see if we can get into the tunnels underneath. I probably should have tweaked with my controls a little bit more here. I recently reinstalled War Thunder, so I lost my control configurations for uh, my joystick setups. So I really should have played with them a little bit more before doing this. Well, that's getting awfully close. And throttle out. Hold inverted over the top of the mountain and we'll put it into a dive just on the other side. Wait till we're past and straighten it out. It sounds like the AI are already having shots at one another. 
Unfortunately, I won't be able to see them unless they get within 1.5 kilometers because that is the maximum viewing range due to the resolution. You can just see the landing craft down there, as you'll see, no markers on them, which is, it's unfortunate. If, if there were markers, I think I'd be able to, even with the low resolution of the development kit to show you some combat, but, and we've got fire coming in at the moment. So I'm being engaged by biplanes that I can't see. That's all right. Let's go through the tunnels. Now, interestingly, hey, blah, 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 as I trip over my tongue, interestingly, as the P-38K is a newer aircraft and it has a higher resolution uh, textures inside of the cockpit, it's actually much easier to read the gauges here. So this may be one thing that Gaijin needs to do with the Oculus Rift as they increase support is actually go through and increase all of the cockpit textures on all of their older aircraft up to what they consider current standards. And we'll do another lap and then I'll bring it back around. Temps are okay. We'll push it into a climb. Let's go for a climb. So, if I take my hands off the controls here and I leave it, I think I got it right. Don't go drifting off. Stay where you are. Alright, I can actually turn in my chair and I've hit my microphone. And we can look straight at the back of the aircraft. And I'm being quite flat. Excellent. Oh. Put that completely in the wrong position. All right, let's tip that over and we'll get some airspeed up and get the hell out of here. But as you can see, I actually turned my head to look behind me to be able to see what's going on. Damn flack, I must have flown straight over enemy destroyers. Checking my left wing is oh, oh, what the hell got me? Ah, uh, AAA took me out. This gives you a basic idea of how the Oculus Rift works. All in all, the technology itself is very good. It does need some time to mature, especially in War Thunder. Uh, they've got to do a little bit of work for it, but with uh, well, they wanted support to be fully operational by the time that. The Oculus Rift went live, so I'm assuming they're going to be doing a lot of work on this over the next three months, as the release date is in March. Now, the Track I, uh, the Oculus Rift technology, so used to saying Track IR, I just keep repeating myself on it. The Oculus Rift technology is about $600 US, is going to be the release price for it, which is a little bit higher than they are anticipating, although they never gave a firm release price. Personally, for what this technology can do, I don't see that as being a problem. Considering what you're doing is basically strapping a 4K monitor to your, to your head with some of the most advanced motion tracking that is available to the public running it. So you can use it in... We're going out past these destroyers again. So you can use it in a way that there's really been no tech in the past that has ever been able to do this. And there's the runway. Yeah, I'm gonna get blasted by AAA again. Here it comes. Ah, oh, god damn it! Same place as last time. I really should stop going to this section of the island. Oh, oh, oh! That hurt. That hurt. That hurt. No, oh, not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Ah. Uh, that's enough of me getting blasted down by base AAA, I think. This is the Oculus Rift. This is how it works. As I said, it's going to be about $600 US. It's impressive tech. The price is about what I would expect. I think it's going to be worth it. I'll be ordering myself one of these, of course. Overall, I'm very impressed, and I think it's the way forward for simulation gaming. I strongly suggest anybody who has the ability to do so get their hands on google cardboard otherwise find a way of making it yourself so you can check these out i think it's really worth your time and it's a very cheap way to find it if the tech's worth it
or at least worth it to you. As you can tell, I'm already sold on the tech completely. I'm looking forward to doing some more OR videos. I will be doing some more this week. This is War Thunder. There's not a huge amount I can do within the game, unfortunately. However, I have DCS World to have a look at, and then I'm going to see whether or not Subnautica and a few other games that I have floating around that support the tech have updated their clients so that their support is up to date. I believe DCS is working fully now, and that one's definitely got a lot more to do as the cockpits are fully interactive, so I can show you how that works. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this brief look at the Oculus Rift technology and how it applies to the type of games I cover on my channel. Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.